the circuit of the analog timer that I've worked on many days, a few weeks during the uh, the past days, etc. And here is the heart of the circuit. That is the analog timer. This is the way that I made it. On wood with brass nails uh, and the wood was well varnished. Uh, like I always do with the PVC glue. That's important to keep a um, stray resistance under control. Because it's an analog timer and the time depends on the value of the capacitor and the resistor. There must be uh, no stray resistance because that will influence the time. Here is the, the, the timer switch. And the good thing of the circuit is that um, you can use quite sm small capacitors for long times. And that's interesting. Well, um, the heart of the circuit is here. And what happens is this, when we push the start button for say 4 seconds, we charge a capacitor. And that capacitor can be chosen here, the value of that capacitor. And when we loosen the start button, the capacitor starts to discharge into the three stage Darlington. And during that time the relay is activated. And when the relay is activated, you um, the 230 volts device is switched on. But after a certain time, uh, the capacitor, the charge in the capacitor is depleted, and then the relay switches off. And that has different effects when the relay switches off. Um, the S-sphere opens so that the device is no longer supplied on 230 volts and this relay closes S3 and that means that the beeper starts to beep after the time given by the capacitor and the resistor. But you can switch that beeper on and off what you like so you can also use it without a device here connected, an oven or whatever, and in that case you use it only as a kind of kitchen timer. The power supply is here, made is a very small 12 volt transformer. It costed one euro in the past a few years ago. Here are the important fuses always use fuses. Very important to tell there is a safety wire. So it's a three pole, a three pole um, mains connector and that piece of metal in the middle is the safety wire and that safety wire must of course be connected through. Safety wire here, green, uh, uh, to this socket. That's always very important, of course. Um, when you do time timing, uh, you need, of course, stabilized voltage supply. Otherwise, uh, such a timer can give uh, strange uh, effects, strange results, and that's the reason why you find here this stabilized voltage supply, completely classical. Is a 14 volt Zener diode, and that is here. It's uh, difficult to see, but it's now in the middle of the screen. 2 and 3 over 5 and the BD 139. Of course, you can use a, a 12 volt um, chip, the 7, 8, 12 or so, is also very well usable. You see the Darlington. BD139 that drives two relays here. This is the power relay that um, drives the uh, that switches the electronic device on 230 volts on and off. And here's another relay 
covered in silicon kit more or less. Um, that switches the beeper on and off. Here is that beeper. I've published it earlier, but the sound was too weak. So I had to amplify it somewhat. And this is the definite circuit for the beeper. In fact, it's all the same. Uh, I only uh, added here a small power transistor uh, for the to amplify the sound. But of course the whole circuit is far too complicated and you can buy these 12 volt beepers as a kind of uh, black box circuit, very cheap everywhere. So there's no need to uh, build to make this uh, in fact very uh, too complicated circuit. But I started it in this way and that's the reason why I had to use it. And the good thing of this circuit is uh, that you can use very small uh, timing capacitors that set the frequency, 10 nanofarad. So you can make it in a miniature way here. These small ceramic caps, yellow and green, are 10 nanofarad capacitors. It's not a bulky circuit and that's good. So I've I, uh, I leave it this way anyway. Um, that was the beeper. Here are the times that you can realize they go uh, uh, from uh, 2 minutes up to 5 hours and 45 minutes. 2 minutes is 10 microfarad say uh, 12 minutes is 47 microfarad hundred fifty microfarad is approximately 30 minutes and an hour is 380 microfarad and five hours is 2650 microfarad and that's an approximate time. But anyway, sometimes it's not uh, very necessary to have a very, very precise timing. And the timing is precise enough for uh, times between, say, two minutes and one hour. Uh, the circuit itself, the timing capacitor, capacitors are here. You can see that they are not bulky and that's a good thing of this circuit. The timer capacitor for the longest time is here. All these capacitors are small 16 volt uh, electrolytic capacitors. And here's the front with a Dutch uh, decals, a start switch and a stop or a reset switch of course and here that loudspeaker that starts to beep so let's put it on switch the beeper on that's also a switch, that's the blue LED. First reset. And now start. And when we wait for two minutes, when all works fine, it will start to beep. I've given the end transistor a kind of a heat sink that was not very necessary. It gets a little bit warm, but in fact, that heatsink can be much smaller. And you can see that I've used here uh, well varnished pieces of wood to make that um, stray resistance to keep it under control. With these small pieces of wood, varnished pieces of wood, uh, 
the resistance between the contacts here, especially in this part of the circuit, are in the mega, many, many mega ohm range. So there is no leak um, current here, almost no leak current that can disturb the timer, the timing. And as I've told earlier, uh, you can use a 7812 instead of this stabilizer unit. And here is in fact what happens when the circuit is activated. So there's not much more to tell. So I'm waiting for the for the timer. Yes, two minutes, approximately two minutes, minutes, the shortest time that was possible. The circuit again, the transformer gets quite warm. That's uh, the reason also why I made an on and off switch. So the overview, the beeper once again, and that was all.